Hegel theory gives you insight, and that's where we'll, we'll be going. Now, building blocks of healthy relationships actually take two basic major processes. One is what I call social engagement behaviors, and these are the negotiation of safety and proximity through using voice, using engagement behaviors. The second part is social bonding, and that requires physical contact, a neurochemical change that results in more permanent bonds. I used to say that the left-hand side was my research, the right-hand side was my wife Sue's research. But you really can't separate these two because you need one as a preamble to the other. And this becomes this important point that we need to be safe with whom we bond. Because if we bond with people that we're not safe with, they end up in your practices. <laughs> so co-regulation is this first phase, and now we're going through our experiential. We're going to look at people, and we're going to be looking at the upper parts of their faces, the obicularis oculi. All the information regarding the ability to co-regulate and be connected is conveyed in the muscles around the eye. And we see this in terms of caregiving. And caregiving is a very, very bad word because it implies a directionality when it's really a bidirectional interaction where the baby is looking back at the mother and if the baby did not look back at the mother, the mother would not feel good. And I asked my medical students and my graduate students, I asked them one question. I say, what do the mothers of severely hyperactive children, autistic spectrum children, fussy babies, and premature babies have in common? Dead silence, because they don't know what I'm really trying to ask. But the answer is, all of them feel that they love their child, but their child is not loving them. What does that mean? The child is not giving them the synchronous and reciprocal interactions. This is not merely a placental mammal. Thing. This is a koala bear from Australia who's making the face-to-face -face eye contact, but where is the other koala bear? It's on the breast. So we see in this one picture the two modes that mammals use to regulate the physiological state of their offspring, food and social behavior. And as individuals get older, food becomes less effective and social behavior becomes prominent. And what do we have in our society? We have lots of eating disorders because people are still trying to use the younger mode, the infantile mode of self-regulation when the social behavior mode is more potent. No oohs or ahs on this? Okay, oh, good. <laughs> a koala bear that was saved after a fire and you see the hand-to-hand, -hand, the eye-to-eye, -eye, and the gesture. Good, good. Uh, <laughs> the engagement behavior. Mm. Wonderful group. <laughs> and again, if you look at the summary, you see a mother infant, you see a, a peer, you see a, a primate with a mother and infant, and then you see what I love to call is a trans-species, cross-species relationship. <laughs> and you see what you would call mirroring, but what you're seeing are the same features of safety being manifested in the relaxation of the obicularis oculi. So the phase one we see in terms of face-to-face -face behaviors, facial expressions, gestures, and prosodic intonations of vocalizations. Now we move to phase two, which